Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is just gonna be a little discussion about why I think that you and everybody really should try vintage road bikes, should try to get a vintage road bike and, and experience that feeling of riding. So I've owned a number of vintage road bikes, mostly from the 80s and 90s. So that's kind of the, the decades that I'll be focusing on. Also, I just think that the 90s, especially late 80s through the, through the 90s, I think this is actually year 2000, maybe 2001, I think that's kind of the sweet spot. If you go back into the 70s, things look a little clunkier and a little heavier in my opinion. Now, I haven't owned a 70s road bike, so I can't say that for sure. But let me just get into some reasons why you may, um, why, why I think they're underappreciated, they're under, uh, valued the vintage road bikes. Number one is because of their value. So first of all, you can get these for very cheap, very, very cheap. People don't really know what to do with them and don't really want them anymore. I see on Facebook Marketplace all the time, decent looking vintage road bikes for a hundred to $200. Now, of course, they'll probably need a little bit of work, maybe new tires or, and stuff like that, but I'm pretty confident you can get into, into the, um, niche of vintage road bikes for $200 or under, at least here in the US, which as you know, is way cheaper than modern road bikes. I mean, you could spend that much on a set of tires. So um, yeah, the, the value, the, the amount you spend getting into vintage road bikes is really awesome for the fun and the feeling that you get. But let me get onto that later. My second reason that I love vintage road bikes and I, and I recommend everybody give it a try is just the styling. I mean, I know this is all personal preference and personal opinion, but to me, you, you really can't beat the styling of the vintage road bikes from the 80s and 90s, especially when you go with the steel frames, because typically the steel tubing, the frame tubing will be thinner and, and smaller than the modern stuff, which is much more chunky. It's, it's usually carbon fiber or uh, hydrofoamed aluminum, and, and they, they have the ability to and need to have more chunkier frames. These vintage bikes, they have thinner tubes, and this one's not even that thin, and they just look beautiful. Here, I'll put some on the screen just so you can see what I mean, how beautiful these vintage bikes can be. And so in my opinion, you just can't beat the looks of a vintage road bike. And when a bike looks good, it makes you want to ride it more. So if you're in maybe a slump and you're riding, you know, you, you've been riding road for a while or whatever discipline you want, and you want to get back into riding somehow, think about maybe getting yourself a vintage road bike. You'll love the looks of it and it'll make you want to go riding more. Third reason is you'll want to ride these bikes. Now, some of them, especially when you go back in like the 70s and 60s and stuff, I don't think they look very comfortable. Their hoods are really uh, small and thin because they didn't have integrated shifting. This bike here has integrated shifting and so it has the chunkier hoods which make it a lot more comfortable. But these things ride really nice. Once you get them set up right, of course, if you have you know a derailleur that's clicking and if you have brakes that aren't working good or anything like that, it's not gonna ride good. But a properly tuned up bike, like any bike, it's gonna, it's gonna ride nice. I think we forget now that we go with these wider tires, if you ride mountain bike or if you ride gravel, like I have a gravel bike with 35 millimeter tires, we forget how loud those tires are on the pavement. This has a 28 millimeter tires, which actually measure out a little bit smaller due to these thin rims. And when I got, when I started riding this again this past week, I was amazed at how quiet uh, the tires um, are on the road. They don't make any kind of whooshing or, or any noise at all virtually. They're very, very quiet and very, very smooth. And the whole ride is very comfortable. I think depending on how you have it set up, this one's not set up as especially comfortable because the frame is rather small. But I've had other ones, other uh, vintage road bikes had larger frames, which allowed me to really raise the handlebars. I like how comfortable these, these bikes are. And they're just different. It's like um, getting into a different type of car. Everything feels different. And it's really a, a cool experience to just ride something different. You'll notice the handlebars are probably narrower than what you're used to. And it might feel a little weird at first, but, but once you get used to it, it's really comfortable. Um, some of these bikes are, are quite a pleasure to ride. That's one of the greatest things. You just feel um, very smooth, very comfortable. Um, it's just, compared to most other bikes that I have, this is probably the most comfortable, um, gives me the most physical um, positivity when I ride it out of any of my bikes, including my nice mountain bike, including my gravel bike. Of course, I'm only up talking about on the road. 
this bike isn't going to do great off-road or on gravel or on anything like that. You can ride it on those surfaces, um, for sure you can, but these are you know, really at home on the road. My fourth reason is because usually these are going to need some work, um, this is going to let you tinker with the bike if you haven't tinkered with bikes much. This is a low risk platform to mess with things, to experiment with things. Like check it out, I put this rack on here a few days ago. Now I've had this rack for a while and it, it went on some other bikes. But that's just a good example of something that you can easily put on. Back then they had uh, uh, more mounting points. Well, it depends on the bike, but back then you would have oftentimes these mountain mounting points that are very standard, you know, and you're not um, threading into any kind of uh, delicate insert here. The, these are, you know, this is a steel frame. It's really low risk. I guess what I'm trying to say is you can tinker with these bikes. Um, you didn't pay much for it to begin with. You can learn your mechanics, you can learn how to set up your shifting. Now granted these are a bit older, but it's the same concept, you know, mechanical group set concept. You can, you can really tinker with these bikes. You can buy parts for them very cheap. I paid probably under $10 for this uh, seat post. You can really mess with these and not worry about messing up your, you know, $2,000, $4,000, um, you know, fancy road bike. And, and there's a real truth to that too, because you don't want to hack up and kind of botch up your nice your nice machine that you spent a lot of money on but something like this if you make a mistake i went with one buy on on this one and that seems a little weird on a road bike especially with such a big single chain ring but you know what it's like hey this this is my platform i can do whatever i want with and and especially this one here it was probably not far from going to the to the waist bin because it had a big dent in the frame. It's a very s small sized frame to begin with, so it's just not like a highly desirable bike. So I really feel free to do whatever I want with it. And um, that's really cool. And I think it's great for people that might be uh, thinking about getting into bike mechanics or wanting to learn more to wrench on a platform like this. A fifth reason is, and this might surprise you, is these things actually break better than you might expect. Now the wheels, the tires rather, are kind of narrow, so that does limit your braking performance. But when I hopped on this bike, I swear it will stop faster than my gravel bike, which has, um, well, if you've seen my other video, it has cable pole disc brakes with hydraulic caliper, so it's a hybrid type of, uh, of braking system. But I was shocked. I was like, whoa, these things are powerful. They have good modulation. I think, I think we get in our mind somehow, maybe from marketing or, or just uh, the echo chamber, that hydraulic disc brakes have the best modulation. And maybe they do have the best. But I was shocked how good this thing brakes. Uh, granted, you know, I'm not going super, super fast. I'm not, you know, heading down a steep mountain because I do remember doing that in the past with these type of um, vintage brakes. Let's call them vintage brakes, these rim brakes. Um, they do kind of have their limit with heat and certainly moisture, but uh, just riding around as I've been doing, they're really, they're very, very powerful. It doesn't take a lot of force to get a lot of grip on these. Um, these are new pads. These are 105 calipers, but I I'm pretty sure any dual pivot, you know, and that's another thing, this has dual pivot uh, calipers, which most of the 90s will have. I think all maybe of your 90s road bikes will have dual pivot uh, calipers. Um, any level from you know uh, Claris to, to Ultegra will probably be fine and, and great. So the braking on these is surprisingly good. But speaking about performance, uh, these aren't gonna compete with your modern road bike. Don't get me wrong. If you, I don't know if I made that impression or not, but you would never want to try to race, uh, enter a race probably with these unless it was a vintage specific race. Uh, you never want to go up to a crit on, on a vintage bike like this. I just think it would be a huge disadvantage. It makes no sense to me to do that. These are about cruising and having fun and just enjoying the feeling of something different. Number six, a sixth reason that I like these vintage road bikes is they are quick. They're not as fast as, like I said, they're not as fast as your modern road bike, but they are quick. This is a great tool for getting around town. Um, and that's why I put this rack on the back. So my sixth reason is these are great commuters, then you don't have to beat up your expensive bike and they're great for collecting mail or getting some groceries. You can put a basket on the front. You're still fast, it's still a fast bike. 
but you also don't mind adding on some extra weight and some extra utility if you do need that. So my sixth reason is these are great commuters and you know uh, grocery getters and stuff like that. In fact, that's what I'm using this one for is actually getting groceries and just riding around town. Now you may be wondering like what kind of vintage road bike should I get? Uh, vintage road bikes, in my opinion, you know, can span from 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, maybe even early 2000s like this one. This is actually a 2001. Um, in my opinion, the best vintage road bike to get is something from the 90s. I'll just say 90s. Maybe this one's to an exception. It's a 2001, but something in that range. Uh, maybe the 80s, but in 1990 or 1991 is when integrated shifting became a thing. And integrated shifting, if you don't know, is where your shifter and your brakes are both integrated here. Prior to that, typically your shifter would be down on your, on your down tube. And that's fine, I like it, but it is a little bit uh, harder to deal with, um, you know, especially if you're not used to it. Um, you, you have to take your hand off of the, off the handlebar to actually shift. It's definitely a slower way of riding. You can't, you know, go down quickly to a lower gear or a higher gear, um, but that's up to you. If you wanna go back to the 80s, you'll find more down tube stuff. And if you go into the 90s, you'll find more integrated stuff. Uh, down tube is nice too. One good thing about down tube is usually it's friction shifting. There are some index down tubes, but typically it's uh, in, um, friction shifting. What friction means is you, you, you don't have like clicks. You don't have notches where each of your gears go. And the bad thing about that is it takes a little bit of finesse to actually get the, the uh, to get into the gear you want. But the good thing about it is that it's really easy to set up. Uh, because it, you don't have that indexing you have to worry about. Uh, it's, it's extremely easy to set up and it's quite intuitive the way it works. You just listen until your gear is in the right, uh, in, in the right space. So that's your choice. It, 90s, you get the integrated stuff. 80s, you have the down tube. If you see a shifter up on, up on the handlebars mounted like that, probably stay away from it. Most cases, those are very low end bikes and not that having a shifter up here is necessarily a bad thing, but it's an indicator of the quality of the bike. I'm not saying that's exclusively true, but generally if you see shifters up here or here or, gri or uh, rotational grip shifters up here, uh, probably stay away from that. So again, what, 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 what do you mean by vintage bike? So again, like I said, integrated shifters, I think most people like better, uh, which is in the 90s. Um, down tube shifters, you'll find more in the 80s and prior. 70s, I don't really prefer those. Um, another thing I should mention about, and this goes back into the 70s, when you have the down tube shifters, usually you'll have a, a thinner hood and less comfortable hood. And I find when you look at the 70s, bikes from the 70s and prior, those hoods are really thin and they're really kind of positioned low typically. And they'll have the cables coming out the top. Now, some people like that, of course, some people love that. But um, personally, I don't find that very comfortable. I like the larger platform of the integrated shifters. I just think it's a lot more ergonomic, ergonomic and uh, more comfortable for riding, especially bigger distances. And the other thing is, is the brakes are a lot better from the 90s. So you have these dual pivot brakes versus the single pivot. I have had, I have dealt a little bit with the single pivot and I just don't find they're nearly as powerful. Um, so I would go with that. I would go with something from the 90s. Uh, usually the wheels are gonna be lighter than the older ones as well, I find, and just nicer. The braking performance is better from the 90s. Um, Usually the whole bikes are lighter from the 90s compared to the 70s, let's say, I believe. And um, I would also go with steel. So you can go with aluminum, a vintage aluminum. They're really plentiful. But for me, the beauty is in the steel, the, the thin tubes of the steel. Um, if I was going for a vintage bike, I would go with a steel. And now when you look at steel, um, a steel vintage bike, you, you might want to take a look at what kind of steel it has. And you know, double butted is definitely good. Um, you can look online about like the different steels that they made them in. Another thing you might want to look at, and this is purely aesthetics, is do you want a crown fork or do you want just a rounded single uh, bladed fork on each side, single blade on each side? Unicrown, I think it's called. Um, this, is, this is an example of that. You can search for that. It doesn't really matter. Works the same, but a lot of people like the, uh, the crowned forks and I, I do think they look nicer. This again is a, a unicrown fork. So, so again, get something with dual pivot calipers, get something steel, get something with integrated shifting. If you plan on doing any touring or attaching racks and things like that, make sure to take a look to make sure there's gonna be um, holes drilled and threaded for 
uh, mounting accessories. This one has some up here, so it actually has multiple choices for your rack situation. And just a general tip, if you're buying old bikes that have steel frames, you might, no, not might, you do wanna make sure that that seat post isn't locked into the frame. You can see my other video on, my, on another bike where I had a lock, and it's a very common problem, a seat post that is corroded and basically unremovable, nearly unremovable from the frame. So when you go to take a look at a vintage road bike that's steel, if it has its seat post in it, uh, loosen up the fixture. You might want to bring some, some Allen wrenches if it doesn't have a quick release like this one doesn't. And just make sure that thing rotates because if, it gets, if it's stuck in there, that can be a real, real pain uh, to, to get out. So that's just a tip. If you have any questions about buying vintage road bikes, just put them down in the comments. Uh, I'll be happy to you know, share whatever I know. So in conclusion, these bikes are really not obsolete. You shouldn't think of them as something you don't want and, and you're not gonna touch a vintage road bike. I really encourage you to try it if you're a cycling enthusiast. Um, even if you're not, even if you're getting into cycling, these actually aren't bad, uh, depending on the person, depending on the situation. And uh, yeah, they're obsolete for racing, of course. And uh, one other small warning, this is a little bit of a special situation. I have this big 48 ring, but a lot of them are still geared pretty high. Um, if you're in a very mountainous or hilly area, it may not have low enough gears for you. Now, of course, you can change that and you can modify, but it's just a little warning if uh, you're just getting into it and, uh, and you live in a mountainous area. You may have trouble with that because back in the... And back in these days, uh, they were geared quite high for some reason. So anyway, um, my point is though, these are not obsolete bikes. These are still really useful, especially for like getting around town and just going on a nice ride on the weekend. You can, you can haul stuff with them. And uh, yeah, they're really better than people give them credit for. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time.